The void of space enveloped the prototype, powered by a black hole reactor, and equipped with humanity's last and latest and greatest technologies, a solitary testament to human defiance in the face of total destruction. Its sleek, angular form cut through the cosmos, distancing itself from a planet that was once vibrant and teeming with life. Earth, now a smoldering husk, lay behind, its demise silent in the vacuum of space. The ship had only one mission, to take on those who destroyed Earth on its own. This was it. There wasn't any backup coming. Its name, Vanguard One. Captain Orion Black stood before the viewport, his gaze fixed on the fading blue orb. The weight of command pressed upon his shoulders, a burden heavier than the gravity of a thousand worlds. He was the epitome of resolve. Yet the reflection in the glass betrayed a flicker of sorrow for the home he'd never see again. First Officer Mira Wren joined him, her presence a silent support. It's hard to believe it's gone, she whispered, not needing to clarify what it was. The loss was palpable, shared by every soul aboard. Black turned his face a mask of determination. Our grief is a luxury we can't afford, Wren. Not now. His voice, though firm, carried an undercurrent of shared pain. The mechanoids took everything. We're the only chance to make sure their tyranny ends with us. The bridge was a symphony of quiet activity, each member of the six-man crew at their post, their roles defined by necessity and skill. Chief Engineer Turner monitored the ship's heart, ensuring the dark matter cannon remained both a beacon of hope and an instrument of vengeance. Dr. Joe, the lead scientist, was lost in her calculations, the numbers a promise of retribution. Sergeant Harper, the tactical officer, reviewed defense strategies, his mind a fortress preparing for the onslaught to come. Vasquez, the communications officer, scanned the frequencies for signs of allies or enemies, his ears tuned to the whispers of the galaxy. Singh, the navigation officer, charted their course through the stars, a pathfinder in the darkness. Dr. Rivera, the medical officer, stood ready to mend bodies and spirits broken by war. The banter that once filled the air, a testament to the crew's camaraderie, had subdued, replaced by a solemnity fitting their mission. Yet amidst the silence there was an unspoken understanding, a bond forged by loss and the shared purpose that now drove them forward. Remember, we're not just avenging Earth, Black addressed his crew his voice cutting through the quiet. We're fighting for every world threatened by the mechanoids. We carry the hope of the galaxy on our shoulders. Wren nodded, her resolve mirroring the captain's. And we won't let them down, not when we have the ultimate trump card. Her eyes glanced towards the chamber housing the dark matter cannon, its power untapped but ready to unleash fury upon their enemies. Turner chimed in breaking the heavy atmosphere with a hint of his usual levity. Just make sure to give me a heads up before firing that thing. I'd rather not be turned into stardust because I was tightening a bolt in the wrong place at the wrong time. Joe, ever the scientist, added, theoretical stardust, Turner. The cannon has been untested. Her tone was matter of fact. Harper grunted, his eyes never leaving the tactical display. Let's just make sure it turns those mechanoids into actual dust. Theoretical victories won't win this war. The endless canvas of space dotted with the light of distant stars, suddenly fractured as a mechanoid scout ship cleaved through the void, while a scout it was ten times larger than Vanguard One. Its arrival was silent but its presence ominous, a harbinger of the conflict to come. Vanguard One, a solitary beacon of resistance, braced for the encounter. Orion's voice was calm, yet it carried an edge of anticipation. Battle stations, this is what we've prepared for. His command echoed through the corridors, a call to arms that galvanized the crew into swift action. Wren, standing beside him, surveyed the approaching vessel with a strategic eye. Scout ships usually don't travel alone. We might be stepping into a larger trap. Let them come, Harper growled, his fingers dancing across the tactical console priming the ship's weapons. We'll give them a greeting they won't forget. Singh adjusted the ship's trajectory, evasive maneuvers ready to deploy. I'll keep us moving. Make it harder for them to get a lock. 
Turner's voice crackled over the comms, a mixture of focus and excitement. Cannons charged and ready. Just say the word, and I'll light up the sky. Joe monitored the energy readings, her intellect racing to predict the enemy's moves. Be wary of their weapons. Mechanoid tech is unpredictable. Vasquez scanned the frequencies, a silent guardian over the airwaves. No calls for backup yet. We might have caught this one off guard. The scout ship, angular and bristling with weaponry, opened fire, a barrage of energy pulses streaking towards Vanguard 1. The battle was a dance of death, a testament to the crew's training and the ship's capabilities. Ren's voice was a beacon of confidence. Harper, return fire. Sing. Keep us agile. Harper's response was immediate, a volley of precision shots that illuminated the space between them. Take that, you rust buckets! Singh's maneuvers were poetry in motion, the ship dodging and weaving with a grace that belied its size. Try and catch us now. The scout ship, relentless, adapted its tactics, unleashing a net of energy designed to ensnare Vanguard One. It was a move unexpected, but not unprepared for. Joe, we need an edge, Orion called out, his gaze locked on the unfolding battle. Without hesitation, Joe replied, rerouting power to shields and proposing a feedback pulse. It might just disrupt their systems. Do it, Orion commanded, his trust in her expertise unwavering. The feedback pulse was a surge of energy that rippled through the mechanoid's net, overloading its grappler, breaking its hold, and sending the scout ship reeling. Now, Turner. Orion's voice was the trigger. With pleasure, Captain. Turner unleashed the dark matter cannon at 1% of its theoretical power output. A devastating beam of energy struck the scout ship with unerring precision. The impact was cataclysmic, punching a hole through the ship, almost severing it in half, its shields not even stopping the shot for a microsecond, and as such, the beam reduced the enemy to space dust in an instant. Silence reclaimed space, the skirmish ending as abruptly as it had begun. The crew of Vanguard One, their resolve solidified, shared a moment of triumph. Yet there was no time for celebration, only reflection and the unspoken acknowledgement of the journey ahead. Wren turned to Orion, a smile of victory fleeting on her lips. One down, but the galaxy is filled with shadows. We'll be ready for them. Orion nodded, his gaze returning to the stars. Let them come. We'll be waiting. As Vanguard One resumed its course, the crew's unity was stronger, their purpose clearer. In the quiet that followed their skirmish with the mechanoid scout, the crew of Vanguard One found themselves grappling with a dilemma far greater than the physical confrontations they were trained to handle. The Dark Matter Cannon, their most formidable weapon, had proven its devastating effectiveness, yet its use brought forth an ethical quandary that permeated the air, heavier than the void of space itself. Orion convened a meeting in the command center, the seriousness of the topic reflected in his solemn expression. We've seen what the cannon can do, he began, his voice steady. It's our greatest asset and potentially our biggest liability. I want to hear your thoughts on its use. Wren, always his steadfast counterpart, was the first to voice the unease that many felt. It's not just a weapon, it's a statement. Using it indiscriminately could make us no better than those we're fighting against. Turner, who had overseen the cannon's operation, leaned forward. We need to consider the practical side. It's powerful, yes, but it has limitations. Overuse could lead to catastrophic malfunctions. Not to mention the energy required to fire it is immense. Joe, whose expertise in dark matter had been crucial in the cannon's development, added a layer of complexity to the discussion. There's also the unknown aspect of dark matter manipulation. We're treading in uncharted scientific territory. The repercussions could extend beyond the immediate targets. Harper, ever the tactician, saw it through the lens of strategy. It's a deterrent, sure, but reliance on a single weapon, especially one this powerful, could blind us to other, perhaps more subtle methods of combat. Vasquez, who had been quietly listening, raised a point that had been overlooked. What about the message it sends? 
If word gets out that we have the power to annihilate planets, it could either scare off our enemies or provoke them into desperate acts of aggression. Singh contributed a navigator's perspective. And let's not forget the moral compass that guides us. Our mission was to defend humanity or what's left of it, not to become harbingers of destruction on a cosmic scale. The debate raged on each member wrestling with the implications of wielding such power. It was a testament to the diverse backgrounds and beliefs that had been unified under the banner of Vanguard One's mission. Yet, despite their differences, a common thread emerged, a commitment to finding a balance between the necessity of their mission and the preservation of their humanity. Orion listened intently, his respect for his crew deepening. We're in agreement, then. The Dark Matter Cannon is our last resort not our first line of defense. We'll use it with discretion, fully aware of the consequences. Wren nodded, her eyes meeting each of her crewmates. Let's not lose sight of who we are and what we're fighting for. The mechanoids may not value life, but we do. The meeting concluded, but the weight of their decision lingered. As they dispersed, the crew carried with them a renewed sense of purpose. They were not just soldiers in a war against a faceless enemy. They were guardians of life, holding the power to both create and destroy. As Vanguard One continued its journey through the stars, the Dark Matter Cannon, while a symbol of their might, was also a reminder of their humanity. They would tread carefully, wielding their power with wisdom and restraint, for they knew that the true measure of strength lay not in the ability to destroy, but in the wisdom to protect. Navigating the uncharted territories of space, Vanguard One found itself amidst a system that was not on any star map, a cosmic labyrinth of stellar anomalies and magnetic storms. Singh, their seasoned navigator, furrowed her brow, her fingers dancing across the console in an attempt to chart a course through the unpredictable maelstrom that surrounded them. We veered off the projected path, Singh announced, her voice laced with concern. These anomalies are interfering with our navigation systems. I'm doing my best to keep us stable. Orion, standing firm despite the uncertainty, peered into the view screen, the swirling colors of the nebula painting his face in hues of uncertainty. Keep at it, Singh. There's always a way through. The crew's morale was a mix of apprehension and resolve. Harper, scanning the surroundings for potential threats, quipped, Well, if we wanted a scenic route, I'd say we hit the jackpot. Turner, monitoring the ship's systems, added, Let's just hope this scenic route doesn't include a free tour inside a black hole. Their course was set, their spirits renewed. The path ahead was unknown, but for the crew of Vanguard One, the journey was everything, each discovery a step closer to their ultimate goal. The tranquility of space belied the turmoil aboard Vanguard One. A series of unexplained malfunctions began to plague the ship, each incident more severe than the last. Initially dismissed as wear from their relentless journey, the pattern of breakdown soon painted a darker picture. Sabotage. Orion convened an emergency meeting, the gravity of the situation mirrored in the somber faces of his crew. Someone on board is undermining our mission, he declared, the silence that followed heavy with accusation and disbelief. Wren, always the voice of reason, tried to keep the rising panic at bay. We need to approach this methodically. Accusations without evidence will only divide us. Turner, the chief engineer, was the first to report the anomalies. The life support systems were tampered with and the navigation database corrupted. This wasn't an accident, it was intentional. Suspicion clouded Harper's tactical mind. His instincts honed on the battlefield now turned inward. Every one of us had access, and every one of us had the opportunity. The question is, who had the motive? Joe, usually lost in her scientific world, felt the sting of distrust. We're a crew, a team. To think that one of us would do this. Her voice trailed off, the thought too bitter to complete. Vasquez, tasked with communications, suggested a silent watcher might be at play. I'll monitor all transmissions, internal and external. If our saboteur is communicating with someone outside, I'll find out. Singh, whose role as navigator had been compromised by the corrupted databases, worked tirelessly to restore their course. 
We're blind in space until I can get this fixed. Every moment we're off course is a moment lost. The crew set about their tasks, the atmosphere tainted with suspicion. Harper and Wren led a discreet investigation, examining logs, interviewing crew members, and scrutinizing every recent action for signs of betrayal. As the investigation deepened, the crew's camaraderie was tested. The once lighthearted banter gave way to terse exchanges, every word measured, every glance loaded with unspoken questions. Turner found himself defending his every move, his loyalty questioned by the very people he considered family. I've been with this ship since day one, Turner protested, frustration evident in his tone. Why would I jeopardize our mission now? Wren, empathetic yet firm, replied, It's not about past loyalty, Turner. It's about present actions. We have to consider every possibility. The breakthrough came from an unexpected quarter. Vasquez, sifting through communications, stumbled upon an anomaly, a hidden data packet embedded in the ship's maintenance logs. I found something, he announced, a mix of triumph and dread in his voice. It's encrypted, but it's definitely not supposed to be there. With Joe's expertise, they decrypted the message, revealing a set of instructions for sabotage, coded but clear. The origin was shocking. The scout ship they encountered before it was destroyed sent a burst of data to the Vanguard One with an AI attached to it. However, the enemy ship was destroyed so quickly with a dark matter cannon that it only was able to upload a fraction of its code. If it had been complete, it would have taken over the ship and maybe even self-destructed the ship. The revelation brought relief mixed with indignation. They were not betrayed by one of their own, but by the mechanoids showed how cunning they were. The incident, while leaving a scar, also reinforced their bond. They had faced the specter of betrayal and emerged stronger, their trust in one another unshaken. The crew of Vanguard One, once divided by suspicion, now stood together, more determined than ever to fulfill their mission. As they set their sights on the challenges ahead, the breach within had become a catalyst for solidarity. As Vanguard One resumed its course through the galaxy, the crew's spirits were buoyed by the resolution of their internal crisis. However, the fabric of space had more narratives to weave into their journey, this time weeks later in the form of a distress signal, faint but unmistakable, pulsing through the cosmos like a beacon of shared desperation. Orion, ever the strategist, approached the signal with caution. Wren, Harper, keep us on alert. This could be a trap. Wren nodded, her eyes scanning the readouts. We're prepared for anything, but remember, it could be someone in genuine need. The source of the signal was a small, battered vessel adrift among the ruins of what appeared to be a recent space battle. As Vanguard One approached, the extent of the devastation became clear. Debris of unknown ships floated in silence, a graveyard of the cosmos. Singh carefully maneuvered Vanguard One closer, allowing Vasquez to establish communication. The voice that crackled through was weary, but filled with relief. Thank the stars. We thought we were the only ones left. They were survivors of a mechanoid attack, a diverse group of species from a coalition of planets that had banded together in the face of the mechanoid threat. Their ship, the Solemn Vow, had been part of a convoy transporting refugees and resources when they were ambushed. Orion, sensing an opportunity for mutual benefit, extended an offer of assistance. We have a common enemy. Perhaps we can offer each other support. The survivors, led by Captain Lyra, a being of grace and resilience, were skeptical but desperate. Our coalition has been scattered, she explained. Resources are thin, and trust is even thinner. As the two ships docked, the crew of Vanguard One welcomed the survivors aboard. The exchange was cautious at first, with both sides measuring the other. Harper, with his tactical mind, was the first to break the ice offering a tour of the ship. Lyra, intrigued, joined Harper along with Joe, who was eager to discuss potential technological exchanges. The conversation soon turned to strategies against the mechanoids, with Lyra sharing insights from her coalition's encounters. Meanwhile, Ren and Singh engaged with the other survivors, learning about their cultures, technologies, and experiences. This exchange of knowledge and perspective 
enriched the crew of Vanguard 1, offering new angles from which to approach their mission. Turner and Vasquez found common ground with the engineers and communication specialists among the survivors, sharing tips and hacks that had kept their respective ships running despite the odds. As the hours passed, initial wariness gave way to camaraderie. The survivors, impressed by the humanity and determination of Orion and his crew, offered their allegiance. We've been fighting a losing battle, Lyra admitted, but together we might just stand a chance. The alliance was formalized with a shared mission, to gather the scattered forces of Lyra's coalition and strike back against the mechanoids. Orion, standing before both his crew and their new allies, felt a surge of hope. This is more than a fight for survival, he declared. It's a fight for our future. Together, we will turn the tide. As the two ships undocked, now bound by a common purpose, the crew of Vanguard One looked at the stars with renewed determination. The encounter had not just provided them with allies, but it also reinvigorated their mission with new perspectives and possibilities. The journey ahead was fraught with danger, but the unity forged in the vastness of space was a testament to the resilience of those who refused to succumb to despair. Together, they sailed forth, a coalition of the willing, ready to face the darkness with a united front. The galaxy held its breath as Vanguard One, accompanied by the solemn vow and a ragtag fleet of allied ships, faced the vast expanse of the mechanoid armada. The mechanoids, a swarm of cold metal and relentless aggression, seemed endless, their ships blotting out the starlight with their mass. Orion stood at the helm, his crew and newfound allies ready at their posts. This is it he announced, his voice steady, a beacon of resolve. Today we turn the tide. For Earth. For our allies. For the future. Wren beside him nodded, her focus sharp. All ships are reporting ready. It's now or never. The battle commenced with a fury that shook the void. Mechanoid ships advanced in unison, a perfect orchestration of destruction. Harper, coordinating the defense, directed their fleet with precision. Focus fire on their lead ships. Break their formation. Singh piloted Vanguard One with unparalleled skill, weaving through enemy fire, her movements a dance of defiance. Each maneuver bought their gunners time, and Turner, overseeing the Dark Matter cannon, waited for the precise moment to unleash its power. Lyra aboard the Solemn Vow led her ship with a grace that belied the chaos around them. Stay close, Vanguard. Our shields are synced. Together we're stronger. The battle raged. A testament to the desperation and courage of those who fought. Joe, working alongside the Coalition's scientists, had devised a series of electromagnetic pulses to disrupt the mechanoid's coordination. Deploying pulses now, she declared, her voice a mix of hope and tension. Vasquez and the communications team worked tirelessly jamming the mechanoids' hive mind signals, sowing confusion among their ranks. Let's see how well they fight in silence, Vasquez said, a hint of satisfaction in his voice. The mechanoids, though formidable, were not invincible. The Allied fleet's strategy began to bear fruit, their combined efforts chipping away at the enemy's overwhelming advantage. Then came the moment for the Dark Matter cannon. The mechanoid fleet, though battered, prepared a counteroffensive that threatened to overwhelm them. Orion gave the order, his voice resolute. Turner, now! The cannon charged, a hum that grew into a roar, the very fabric of space trembling in anticipation. Turner, his hand steady on the trigger, unleashed the weapon's fury. A beam of pure destruction surged forth, tearing through the mechanoid fleet, annihilating everything in its path. The aftermath was a silence profound and echoing. The mechanoids' advance was halted, their fleet in ruins. But the victory was not without cost. Several allied ships had been lost, brave souls who had stood firm in the face of annihilation. Orion, surveying the debris field, felt a pang of sorrow for the fallen. Their sacrifice will not be forgotten. We'll carry their memory with us as we continue the fight. Wren, her eyes on the stars knew the war was far from over. 
this is just the beginning. But today, we've shown that we can stand against the darkness. The crew and their allies took a moment to honor those lost, a brief respite in the endless battle. But their resolve was stronger now, tempered by the fires of conflict and the bonds forged in combat. The path ahead was uncertain, the mechanoid threat far from vanquished. But for the first time, there was hope, a belief that together they could reclaim the future from the clutches of an unfeeling enemy. In the aftermath of their harrowing victory, the remnants of the Allied fleet, with Vanguard I at the helm, navigated the debris of battle, the stars themselves seeming to mourn the loss. The silence of space was a stark contrast to the chaos that had just ensued, but there was little time for reflection. The mechanoids, relentless as ever, regrouped swiftly, their singular purpose unhampered by losses. The pursuit began anew, a shadow of doom casting over the weary allies. Orion, his face set in determination, assessed their situation with grim resolve. We can't outfight them this time. The cannon has to recharge. We'll have to outsmart them. His eyes met Wren's, finding a reflection of his own steely resolve. Wren nodded, her mind already racing with strategies. We'll need every trick in the book. Harper, sing, it's time to play hide-and-seek. Harper, manning the tactical station, couldn't help but smirk at the challenge. I've been waiting for an opportunity to test my new diversion tactics. Let's see how well these mechanoids can track a ghost, she said as the stealth drive came online. Singh, her hands steady at the navigation console, plotted a course through an asteroid field, dense and treacherous. This will either be our best maneuver or our last, she quipped, the gravity of the situation not enough to dampen her spirit. As Vanguard One and the Allied ships darted into the asteroid field, the mechanoids hesitated, their algorithmic logic weighing the risks. It was a hesitation that Orion intended to exploit. Joe and the science team deployed a series of drones, each programmed to mimic the energy signature of the Allied ships. Let's give them targets too tempting to ignore, she said, watching as the drones dispersed, luring the mechanoids into a wild chase through the asteroids. Vasquez, overseeing the communications, jammed the mechanoid sensors with a cacophony of false signals. If they're looking for us, let's make sure they hear us everywhere but where we actually are. The mechanoids, drawn by the drones and confused by the jamming, fragmented their forces, some pursuing the decoys while others tried to decipher the myriad signals bombarding their systems. Turner, monitoring the ship's systems, adjusted the power distribution to minimize their signature. Drive output nearing 100% were going dark. Let's hope space is big enough for us to disappear. The chase was a tense ballet, a test of nerve and ingenuity. The Allied ships weaved through the asteroids, barely a whisper against the vastness of space, while the mechanoids, deceived and disoriented, found themselves ensnared in a web of their own making. Harper, watching the mechanoids' movements, allowed himself a moment of satisfaction. Looks like we're not the only ones who can get lost in space. Wren, her focus on the path ahead, remained vigilant. Don't celebrate just yet. We're not out of the woods, or, should I say, the void, until we reach safe harbor. As the last of the mechanoid's ships veered off, lured away by the final drone, the Allied fleet emerged from the asteroid field, the stars greeting them like old friends. The immediate threat evaded. They took a collective breath, the relief palpable yet tempered by the knowledge that the war was far from over. Orion, his gaze fixed on the void ahead, spoke with a quiet intensity. This was more than an escape. It was a lesson. In unity there's strength, in ingenuity. Victory. We'll need both to end this war. The fleet, now hidden in the shadow of a nebula, prepared for the next phase of their plan. The mechanoids were still out there, searching, but for the moment, the Allies had vanished, ghosts in the vastness of space. The journey of Vanguard I and its allied fleet had reached a pivotal moment, the coordinates set for the heart of the mechanoid empire. What lay ahead was not just a battle but a moral quandary, 
The decision to use the Dark Matter Cannon not taken lightly. The targets were mechanoid worlds, central to the enemy's operations. Each world destroyed meant crippling their ability to wage war, yet the act itself carried a weight that pressed heavily on every heart aboard. Orion, his brow furrowed in thought, stood before the viewport, the distant stars casting a somber light across his face. We've come to the point of no return, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. The decisions we make now will define us forever. Ren, always at his side, shared in the burden. We're doing this to end a war, to save countless lives. Remember, those worlds are void of innocent life. They're factories of death. The crew gathered, a somber assembly, each member wrestling with their conscience. Harper, who had always faced the enemy with unwavering resolve, found himself questioning the path laid out before them. Destroying worlds. It's not what I signed up for. But then, I didn't sign up to watch humanity fall, either. Singh navigated the ship through the void, the coordinates locked in. Her hands were steady, but her voice betrayed her inner turmoil. Every course I plot, I wonder, is it leading us to salvation or damnation? Jo, immersed in her research, sought to find solace in logic. These worlds are the mechanoids' nerve centers. Remove them and we cripple their ability to harm others. It's a surgical strike, not blind destruction. Vasquez monitored the communications, the silence from the mechanoid world's eerie in its finality. It feels like we're ghosts, haunting these worlds before we consign them to oblivion. Turner, tasked with the operation of the Dark Matter Cannon, felt the weight of responsibility acutely. Every time I power up this cannon, I wonder, are we still the good guys? The first target loomed ahead, a planet devoid of natural life, its surface a testament to the mechanoid's singular purpose of conquest. As the cannon charged, a palpable tension filled the air, but the crew united in their resolve. Orion gave the order, his voice steady, a command that would change the course of the war. Fire. The beam of the dark matter cannon tore through the void, striking the mechanoid world with devastating precision. The planet, consumed by the beam's energy, imploded, leaving behind nothing but a memory of its existence. The aftermath was a silence that spoke volumes, the crew of Vanguard One and their allies confronting the reality of their actions. The war against the mechanoids was a war of survival, but the cost was a burden they would all carry, even if they were all unfeeling mechanical creatures. In the quiet that followed, Harper found a semblance of peace in the camaraderie of the crew. We did what we had to do, for the sake of the living. I can live with that, knowing we're together in this. Wren, looking out at the stars, pondered their journey. This war, it's taken so much from us, but it's also shown us who we are, what we're fighting for. Orion, his gaze fixed on the void where a world once was, knew the battle was far from over. We carry the weight of these actions, not as a burden, but as a reminder of the cost of freedom. We'll see this through to the end for humanity for the future. All the scorched worlds they left behind were a testament to their resolve, a grim reminder of the cost of war, and a beacon of hope for the countless lives they sought to save. In the vast expanse of space amid the remnants of their actions they forged ahead, United in their mission, their spirits undaunted, their resolve unbreakable. Years had passed and the final battle against the mechanoids had left the galaxy in a precarious state of peace. With the enemy's command centers obliterated, their fleets scattered to the winds of space, humanity and its allies, faced the daunting task of rebuilding from the ashes. Vanguard One, a name that had become a beacon of hope across the stars, made its journey back to where it all began, the ruins of Earth. Orion, his eyes reflecting the weariness of war yet alight with the promise of peace, steered the ship towards their home planet. The Earth that greeted them was a shadow of its former self, but beneath its scars there was potential for new life, for a new beginning. Wren stood by Orion, her thoughts mirroring his. We've been given a second chance, she said, 
her voice imbued with a solemn joy. Not just to rebuild, but to rethink our place in the universe. As they landed, they were met not by crowds, but by the silence of a world waiting to be awakened. The crew, once soldiers in a galactic conflict, now found themselves pioneers on the frontier of a new era. Harper, surveying the landscape with a critical eye, couldn't help but crack a smile. Well, looks like we're back to basics. Anyone remember how to farm? Joe, ever the scientist, was already cataloging the plant life that had begun to reclaim the planet. We'll do more than farm. We'll engineer an ecosystem that thrives, learning from the mistakes of the past. Sing, gazing up at the sky they had fought so hard to protect, felt a deep connection to their mission. We navigated the stars to find our way back here. Now, we guide humanity to its new dawn. Vasquez, checking the communications arrays they had set up, broadcasted their message of hope. To anyone out there, Earth is our home again. Let's rebuild. Together. Turner, amidst the ruins, began the work of constructing shelters, his engineering skills never more vital. We're building more than homes. We're building a future. As they worked, the first ships of survivors and allies began to arrive, drawn by the promise of a new beginning on Earth. The planet, once a symbol of loss and despair, became a canvas for unity and hope. Lyra, joining Orion as they watched the newcomers disembark, shared a moment of reflection. Your world has become a beacon, Orion. A testament to what can be achieved when beings of different worlds stand together. Orion nodded, the weight of leadership balanced by the shared vision of those around him. This is just the beginning. Together, we'll build a world that honors those we've lost and protects the generations to come. The days turned to weeks and the weeks to months. Earth under the care of its returned children and their interstellar allies slowly began to flourish. Cities rose from the ruins, not as towering monuments to progress but as harmonious extensions of the natural world. Wren, overseeing the establishment of a new global council, emphasized the importance of unity. We've been given a chance to rewrite the story of humanity. Let's write one that future generations will be proud to read. The crew of Vanguard One, once warriors in the darkest night, became the architects of dawn. Their journey, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, inspired countless others to join in the task of rebuilding. As the sun set on a day filled with promise, Orion and his crew stood together, looking out over a world reborn. The scars of the past were still there, but so too was the undeniable truth that from ashes, new life could grow. Earth was alive, its heart beating strongly beneath their feet, a silent vow that the darkness of the past would never overshadow the light of the future. In the quiet that followed, a sense of peace settled over the crew. They had returned as saviors, but it was their legacy of hope and renewal that would define them. For in the ashes of the old earth, they had sown the seeds of a new world, a testament to what could be achieved when humanity reached beyond itself, towards the stars and back again. But in a distant galaxy far, far away, a dormant mechanoid hive mind awoke from its slumber.